Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I wanted to talk about what it was like to code what we say back in the day. And I'm talking about these machines here. Now, my granddad got me one of these when I was nine years old, ZX81. Um, and we would code with this, ZX81 Basic. He said back then, the world will be run by these things in 20 years time. And that was obviously very true. And now 40 years on, we are glued to our cell phones. We've got the cloud internet, all these other services that we can um, we could use. And I was thinking about it, thinking what was it really like to code back in those early days? So I want to show you what it was like on actually the next generation machine, which was the ZX Spectrum came out in 82. And really just give you a few examples of what that was like. So let's just uh, jump in and take a look. Let's take this emulator now then and we'll do a quick hardware reset on it so you can see what it's like to boot these things up. And first thing I want to tell you about on the Spectrum is let's have a look at the keyboard because you'll notice it's got lots of commands written on there. We didn't actually get to type the commands in that we were wanting to run. You press the key associated and if it's in the right place that would come up. So it means that you couldn't really get it wrong and it would error out on the lines if you were trying to type things incorrectly. But I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we start a program here and we say we're going to have line 10 and we're going to press P for print and we say the, the normal hello world and enter that. If it pops up the top into the program, it means it's accepted it and the syntax is correct. So we can press R for run and you can see we get the hello world. Zero OK means that it didn't have any errors. It ran completely and finished on line 10. So let's add a bit to that now and say, OK, we're going to ask it for some input and we'll say enter the start, which will give as a variable, let's say A. And the next line, we'll do the same thing again with enter end and B. And we're going to create a bit of a loop there from this A to B and put the words on the screen with the number. And we're going to draw a circle of that particular radius. So if we do that, we'll say four we'll call it C equals A. Now we can't press the space and type in the word two, like I was saying before. Um, it's because it's got the, the L there, it's not expecting a command yet. What we can do though, is if we jump back to our keyboard, we can see that the two is actually on the symbol shift on the F key. So what we would do is we would press control on the emulator and press control F and we get the two. Now, if I tried to type it with two B like that, and press enter, you're going to get an error on that line. It says, no, that's not acceptable. You need to fix it before it will go in. So we'll go back here and say control F and put B. And as long as it goes up into the top, it means your syntax is right. It doesn't guarantee it's going to run because you might have some other errors in there, but essentially the syntax is correct. So let's now put in this like so. We'll put that and then line 60, we're going to draw a circle. Now the circle command is interesting because on the keyboard again, you'll see it's actually underneath the H key here, under here in red, which would be a symbol shift and H. On the emulator, however, we have to do control shift, get the extended command set, and then control H, and we will get circle. So uh, we'll go in and do that, and we'll give it, the resolution is not great on these screens. So 150 by 100, that's the, the X and the Y coordinates, and then the C is going to be the radius. So that'll be there, and 70 will be next C. Now, if you wanted to insert lines of code, you could do that by putting in line, say, 65 or 66. If you wanted to insert more, you've got a bit of a problem. You've got to start readjusting your code. So there was a bit of thought around that. But if I put in this in here, it will insert it in. And I could then say 65, just take it on its own, press Enter, it actually deletes it. So I want to, again, be careful with that. But what we'll do here is say print, done and okay there and we're ready to go so we just run that one and we get hello world again and we get the input line so we'll say let's go from 15 to 21 enter that and it will print them on screen and give us a circle pretty simple stuff you can see once again okay the code ran correctly and finished on line 80 so there we go Next thing I want to do here, we'll just do a quick reset on that. And I'm going to bring in some code that I wrote earlier, just to show you a little bit more advanced what we can do with, uh, with some random figures, some drawing lines, and, uh, and different colors, and see what that looks like. 
So here's our little program that is going to draw some random lines all over the screen. It will do up to 20 lines, as you can see on line 100 there. Um, but basically what it's doing is it sets it at zero first of all. It will then produce a random number, which is equal to that screen resolution. It'll draw the, the random line, as you can see on line 60, and then reset the start point as the where it just finished that line from. Increase the colors and, uh, and then go on until obviously it reaches 20 lines. What I'm going to do is just run that and see what it uh, what it looks like. As we run that, see, there we get some random lines. You can see it set the border as red, but you can see one of the lines there is actually a white line, which doesn't really do us much good. So what I want to do there is say on line 80, we are going to change that. So if we go to line 80 and get in there and edit that, we're just going to say if the color is greater than six rather than seven, so we don't get any white lines anymore, which you can see there. So pretty simple stuff, but gives you an idea of what uh, what we used to have fun with back in the day. So there we go. So thanks for watching that today. Hope that was interesting for you. Uh, there's more on thecloudgeezer.com. Uh, please have a look at that and follow me on Instagram at thecloudgeezer. That's just a bit of fun and uh, have a look. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.